Welcome back to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas, or welcome in if this is your first time. Tuesday, January 3rd. Thomas Miller, thanks for joining us. I took too much of your time yesterday, so we'll make it back up today. But I wanted to finish the chart for 2023, the midnight, and mine is set to New York, New York, and in the equal house system. But it is worth looking at some of these themes because this is, in essence, the birth chart, if you will, of 2023. So yesterday we talked about Neptune and Jupiter being in the sixth house. So psychological development around spirituality, perhaps an expansion of the virus still that we're not out of the woods yet. Saturn in the fifth house. There are some things going on there that I've got my eye on. I'm not going to go too much in depth right now. Uh, but I am watching that for sure. And this fifth house just tells us where to watch. The fourth house has the big stellium in the sky right now, and that's going to mean that we're going to really be focusing on Capricornian things related to our home. So that's foundational. Not flighty, grounded. Not random, planned out. Mercury, too, in retrograde in Capricorn, uh, also will set some kind of tone there for this year. Those of you who have Mercury retrograde in your natal charts could speak to what that's like. And then we talked about last the moon in the seventh house related to relationships and how we might be spawning or developing or growing relationships this year. And that's a theme that Ray Merriman had mentioned. In the 8th house, we have three things that I think are of note. Mars in retrograde in Gemini, and also the north node of the moon sitting right next to Uranus, both in Taurus. And if you cast this chart, you'll see what I'm looking at, because right there on the cusp of the 8th house is a lot of action and a lot of energy. So the moon is, what, 2, 3 degrees off of the cusp, the north node is two degrees off of the cusp. Those are both close enough that we can say mildly amplified, but with Mars and Uranus both in retrograde in the transformational eighth house, could there be some sudden surprises and even accidents that could result in transformational changes? Yes, it's possible. And you also have now a seven degree separation between Saturn and Uranus. So we're getting out of that orb of square, but still just a whiff of it there. So you could even bring that into this as well. Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, Aquarius, Saturn in Aquarius, also the ancient ruler of that sign, meaning that the authoritarian versus free will battle that we've so set up for the Aquarian theme of the next 20 years could definitely be at play this year strongly. You didn't think with Pluto headed to the zero degree Aquarius mark this year was going to change any of that now, did you? <laughs> of course not. And then, of course, with that nodal position, the south node is in the second house in Scorpio. So there could be some shakeups around finances this year. And with that area of surprise over in the eighth house and both of those planets in retrograde, I would be watching your budget for sure and just making sure that expenses are for your own personal growth, development, enhancement. In, in other words, investing in yourself. Don't be frivolous, but don't be skimpy, especially when it comes to acquiring new skills. I've been saying that quite a bit. And then also, the midheaven is in Cancer, ruled, of course, by the moon in that relationship seventh house. So you should be looking for and have your antenna up this year for key strategic work-related relationships. And that doesn't necessarily mean a romantic relationship. I'm talking about any kind of coming together with another person or group that could further you. Take a look at anything, but be very scrutinous. The other thing with the Midheaven in Cancer is that this would be a really perfect year that you only make decisions for your career based on intuitive awareness and insight. So don't create a business plan out of your head. Follow the one that comes to you inspirationally. That's where you'll make some money this year. I hope these have been helpful. It wouldn't hurt at all wherever you keep charts around to cast this chart and make sure that you can get back to it because it will be worth looking at periodically through the year. 
All right. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Ray Merriman's audiobooks are out that I narrated. The Well, I say the one is out now so far. Forecast 2023. Trends is coming right behind it. And we're going to cook something up on trends. Got an idea for that. But Forecast 2023, if you want to get the whole lay of the land, not just from a financial perspective. It is a mundane, it takes a look at everything kind of perspective. There's no finances in this at all it would definitely be worth picking that up. There's an investment in yourself <laughs> for sure. Learn some astrology for the year ahead. All right, have a great day and I will see you back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.